Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made children, made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our message.
A reading from Paul's letter to Titus. When the goodness of loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of the Lord. 
But no matter what your tradition is, there's one thing we all share in common today. It's the celebration of the nativity of our Lord. We celebrate the moment in time when God descended the heavens and came to live among us. Not in a mansion or a palace of a king or an emperor, but one among his people to share his love with all of humankind. Tonight, words we heard in our reading transport us back, back to a time when our Savior entered the world and fulfilled the words of the prophets and who foretold of his birth. Tonight, these words assure us, they assure us of God's great plan for his people. Our journey tonight begins in a little town of Nazareth, far from to the north from Bethlehem of Galilee. Romans had called for a census, which required those to return to their home of tribal origin, which required Joseph to go to Bethlehem, some 70 miles as a crow flies. But as we know, they had to go extra dis distances, and it came out to be about 90 miles, just so they could, could avoid going through Samaria. It would be a long and treacherous four-day journey on its own. And with Mary being far along in her pregnancy, it would make it even harder. There would be concerns about the weather. I think we have that one today, don't we? <laughs> there would be concerns about the weather, about thieves who might attack them along the way, or Roman soldiers who would harass them as they traveled through the various parts of the countryside. One can only imagine what they were thinking as they traveled the hazardous roads leading to Bethlehem. Where would they rest each night? What would they eat? What would they encounter? O oh, little town of Bethlehem, as we sing about this time of the year, a small town that would become great, a humble little town sitting about five miles south of Jerusalem and perched on a hill 2,500 feet above sea level. You can see Jerusalem from there, a town surrounded by fertile land, flush enough to raise sheep, a town where from which a shepherd boy named David came, a town foretold by the prophets that would give the world a savior. The prophet Micah said this, but you, O Bethlehem of Hathra, who are you, little to be among the clans of Judah? From you shall come forth for one who is the ruler of Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Bethlehem, as we know from this story, was over an overcrowded town because of the census, a town where Mary and Joseph would arrive to find accommodations full, places where they'd have to find a place, but live, but delivered Jesus in a manger. After a long, hard journey and now faced with a lack of comfort, high on this mountain where shepherds guard their sheep, year-round, Jesus was born. From this humble little town, humble little town of Bethlehem, from humble parents would come a humble king, the Son of God, Jesus. How glorious and frightening it must have been for those around, especially the shepherds in the field, frightened and terrified by the announcement of Jesus' birth by an angel. But the angel comforted them and assured them with these words. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born in this day the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands, of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there with, with the angel was a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heaven, and on earth, on earth, peace among those whom he favors. This was the promise of God, the Messiah, an announcement and proclamation that came to those who were common and humble, an announcement that came to those who were looked upon socially as less desirable. There was an announcement that God was be bringing salvation not to a specific group, not to royalty, 
but to the whole world. And these shepherds, these shepherds were the first to hear the good news. What I think is more amazing in God's plan is these shepherds were probably the shepherds who were spoken about in the Mishnah. The Mishnah tells of a place in Bethlehem called Migdal Eder. It's a place where the sheep destined for the temple, sheep without blemish, were pastured, not to be mixed with other sheep. And here, the Lamb of God was born, the one who would be sacrificed <coughs> excuse me, for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. The message tonight we hear is one of hope, one of assurance. It's a message that has withstood over 2,000 years and one that is still relevant today. It's very relevant today. It's one of God's grace, a gift that is not earned but freely given without any merit on our part. Today, the world is not much different than the world at the time of Jesus' birth. Today, the real meaning of Christmas is easily lost in the mass media, the commercialism, and suspension and suspensions by society. A real reason because it becomes obscured is a lot by the media bias. And I have to confess, I really do confess to you tonight, that it's the reason that I tell people I don't like Christmas. I know that sounds shocking, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But to borrow from one of the slogan bumper stickers that we see, I really don't like the season. However, I love the reason for Christmas. I love the reason for Christmas. If you've ever been in the office area, you'll see on my door a picture of Grinch. Now, how many of you know Grinch? <laughs> One of the songs that most of us will probably immediately think of when we hear the Grinch is the one that starts out, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. The Grinch, however, is a reminder. It's a reminder to us of what Christmas is really all about. In the story, the Grinch seeks, sneaks into every house, and steals all the presents and decorations from every who and who bill. There was nothing left under the tree or in the stockings. He took everything that they had from his point of view, seeing to be what Christmas was all about. He thought Christmas was the commercialism of giving gifts. Given the advertisements we see on the media today, one would easily come to the same impression of our society. The next morning, as the Grinch stood on a snow-covered mountain, he expected to hear the boo-hoo from every who in Whoville. <laughs> Instead, he heard them singing, heard joyous, joyous voices singing, Fahu fores, dahu dores, welcome Christmas, come this way. Fahu fores, dahu dores, welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Welcome, welcome, Bahu Ramos. Welcome, welcome, Dahu Damos. Christmas Day is in our grasp as long as we have hands to clasp. Bahu Fores, Dahu Dores. Welcome Christmas. Bring your cheer. Bahu Fores, Dahu Dores. Welcome Christmas, all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp. Welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. As the Grinch heard them singing, it caused him to ponder in his heart, what could it be? Christmas came. It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, bags. As the Grinch puzzled, he thought, maybe Christmas, just maybe Christmas, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. To many, the idea of Christmas is what the original French originally thought. It was about ribbons and packages, boxes and bags filled with presents. But Christmas is much more than that. Christmas Day is more. 
It is not about the gift from the store. Rather, it is about the greatest gift of all. God sending us His Son, His Savior, the one who came into the world to save humanity. It's about God's love for His creation and for you and me. The story ends with the Grinch's heart growing three times because he found, he found the true meaning of Christ. For us, our heart grows when we ponder and we embrace the true meaning of Christmas, the gift of redemption through Jesus, the redemption that God gave us, reconciliation through him. Is it any wonder we sing, heart the herald, angels sing, glory to you, the newborn king, are we saying joy to the world, the Lord has come? Tomorrow, I hope you awaken and say, Welcome Christmas, come this way. Welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. For unto us a Savior is born. Unto us a child is given. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Governor DeSantis, the Congress and courts. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for healing for Helen Dartinger, Joe Ann Lauren, Alan Smith, Bill DeGloria, Gail Pearson, Catherine White, May Peach Jeff, Dick Durrell, John Siegel, Martha Rahman, Patricia Schneider, Lois Ridgway, Casey Crawley, Ron Highline, and for those serving in our military, especially those who are family members of prisoners, Matthew DeCaro, Michael Irvin, Amanda Finnegan, Derek Gardner, John Mann, Red Mann, Ryan Nemeth, Jason Nemeth, Aaron Storch, Joseph Trosca, in your mercy, Here we, are, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially June, our guest that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of peace and justice, we pray for the peoples of Ukraine and all countries currently suffering conflicts. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Almighty God, who is poured out on us a new light of your incarnate word, grant that the same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And then let us pray together for our search, if it shows up on the board. No, okay. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on each of us in your beloved church, and so guide the hearts and minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish and a bishop for our diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we are sinning against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry when we don't want to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
unfortunately, it is. But however, there is another one in the back, so while they're setting the table, um, I will go back and do that, and then I'll be on another mic, mic three, uh, which I used to use before. So uh, it took me a minute to do that. But first of all, I do want to welcome you and say what a joy it is to have you here in God's house and worshiping Him today. A um, couple little things uh, that I would like to share with you. Uh, there is a service tomorrow at 10 o'clock right here. Father Bob will be doing that service um, during Holy Communion. You may come and, and take the way for we do open communion to all baptized Christians, regardless of their age or denomination. And you may come and take the wafer and the cup. There'll be a station here with pre tainted wafers if you'd like to do that. Um, and there are gluten-free wa wafers also. So do that. I just want to say thank you for being here. It is a joy to have you with us tonight as we celebrate. As you know, this is a time of the year when there's so many us <coughs> that we do, but we do come to give to the Lord for what He's provided for us. And we thank you for special, um, your faithful giving to the church because we're able to do and when we're able to touch lives and we're able to reach out both inside the walls and outside the walls. And when we do those things and reaching inside and outside the walls, we are doing what Christ has done for us because Christ loves us and made a sacrifice for us under God. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice unto him.
Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Barukata Adonai Elohim Malachamon Bari Priyagatham. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth fruit from the vine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect human of the fur flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and the truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. 
on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the peace.
now we pray together with those who are worshiping with us online to receive the presence of Jesus spiritually. Together, let's pray. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the heartfelt desire that we may always be united to you and to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask you now to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you and embrace you with all the affections of our souls. Amen. Now let us pray together for the gifts which we receive today. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we sing Silent Night.
And now may Christ, our infant Savior, give you the joy of the Bethlehem shepherds, the awe of worshiping sages, and the humility and love of the Holy Family. May you become as little children, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our going forth hymn is one that we love to sing. Joy to the world.